be having an amazing weekend. Andrew, you haven't put the lights on. I just remember, it's, right, it's my job. I'm the roadie. My name's Colette Latriga. I'm a Thermomix consultant here in Australia. I'll tell you a little bit about our current offer um, a little bit later. It's a real great one that's closing tomorrow. But let's get straight into cooking. Now, today we're doing a, a nut and seed bread. It is a super, super healthy bread. And the recipe was given to us by um, the beautiful retreat, um, which is known as Gwindana, which is on the Gold Coast. It's a health retreat and they do all of those beautiful relaxing yogas and eating food properly, so to speak. And this is one of their recipes that I'm really fond of. And if you haven't made it, please give it a try. It's super duper easy and full of all those really good things that we should be putting into our body. So let's get going. It's fully guided on cookie do that makes it really easy and all I need to do now is to get going and that is to press start cooking. So it's telling me to line a loaf tin. Now this is a, a smaller loaf tin um, but I choose to do it in the uh, mix shop loaf tins. Love these um, and what that means because it's a slightly bigger tin I'm going to get a um, less deep loaf and I quite like that size. Um, now the beauty with these tins is, it's telling me to line it. I don't need to line this one. Um, I, if it's not from the mix shop, I really have no ideas. You'd need to sort that out. But remember, you don't oil, you don't, um, you don't need to line them. The stuff comes out of this rose gold where really, really well. So that's prepped. I don't need to do anything to that one. So on to the next step. So the first ingredient going in are flax seeds, in case you haven't seen these. These are kind of tiny little seeds. Flax seeds and linseeds often get confused. In fact, they are the same thing. Um, the main difference is that linseed um, has the husk removed, so it's going to be a lighter colour. So you could actually interchange them if you wanted to. So 100 grams going into there. Um, and the next thing it's asking us to do is put the lid on and we're going to mill that down to powder. I love that the Thermomix can do that. I mean, how amazing is it that with our Thermomix it can just do so much, you know? We could put into that some raw sugar and turn it into caster sugar. We could put some white rice in there and make our own rice flour. There's just so much you can do. And one of the things I probably do on a weekly basis is I will put some whole um, oat grains in here and mill them down to my wholemeal flour. So I've got all the germ, the, the actual outer husk, everything. So it's going to be more nutritious. But for today, what we've actually got, 10 seconds, we've got a beautiful soft powdery um, seed there, which has been ground down, which is cool. So we're then hitting next. So the next thing it's asking us for is the nuts. So go raid your pantry, whatever you happen to love and have. I'd normally love to put some macadamias in, but I don't have any. So I've just got walnuts, almonds, pistachios, whatever you happen to have on hand. So 70 grams or thereabouts going in. So the next thing, it, we want to just literally just break those down and, and in, in, in no time at all. So just one second and we're going to turn that round. So it's kind of just giving it a quick spin. So I was reading before this that this, this, um, um, this can be so good for your gut health. Yeah, absolutely. And I hadn't realised when I started looking at gut health how poor gut health can lead to feeling tired, lethargic, poor sleeping. I hadn't realised so many things were attributed to gut health. And they were saying that a, a slice of this every day, you know, with a, a reasonably good fibre diet, can get your gut back in order within a week. 
It is. You're absolutely right. And I'm amazed you're reading up on that. Well, I just thought I'd look at it before we, uh, we came on yeah. here to know what the hell well we were doing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. You know, the gut is the start. They actually say our gut is our second brain. You know, it's the start. We look after our gut. We're going to be generally much healthier, much fitter. And this is definitely a gut healthy thing to have. So we're next going to pop in some quinoa flakes. So these are the quinoa flakes. And basically what these are, you know, the little quinoa seeds, those tiny little seeds, they take the seeds and they squash them to make the flakes. <coughs> so that's exactly the same, like with um, the oat groats, you'll take those and they will squash them down to make your rolled oats. So in goes the quinoa and we all know what a super powerful, healthy thing quinoa is for us to have. All right, hitting next. Um, sunflower seeds, 70 grams, and also pepitas. I tend to have these mixed um, because I always put them in together in whatever I'm cooking. So that's 140 grams in total. I love nibbling on those things. They're just delicious. Um, and the next thing we're going to add in there is sila musk. Um, so this is super for your gut, it really is. They actually use this in meta metamucil. Yeah, metamucil. You know where it helps your bowel to actually move and and do what it should be doing. So again, um, adding this into your diet is going to be a great thing. Right. So heading on to next teaspoon of salt. I like it to be a generous teaspoon of salt, but you know the recipe says one teaspoon. So again, up to you. And then heading next. Um, macadamia oil, you can use whatever oil you want, but obviously macadamia oil, again, following on that healthy um, aspect of things, so 45 grams. Okay, so you'll find that in Woolies and Coles, it, it's, it's all over the place, and you know, one bottle of that will give you definitely about four, maybe five of those loaves. Okay, and now a little bit of raw honey. Raw honey um, is obviously going to be better for you um, rather than the more processed honeys. This is the hum honey, which I absolutely love. Um, it's a local honey, but you can buy this now in your Woolworths and all those places. So 20 grams going into here. And it did, I'm not sure whether you saw how easily and quickly that came out. Um, that's because I just popped a little lining of the macadamia oil in the container so it just pours out really easily. With the raw honeys, crystallization is a common thing so it will thicken up which makes it harder often to actually get out and use. So 20 grams of that. Um, and then we're going to put in warm water but before we do that, with this one, now this loaf is not sweet so you, you actually saw there we literally put like a tablespoon of honey that's where the sweetness come from. So it's very non-sweet. Now I, with this particular loaf, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. What I'm going to throw in there are some craisins, um, just to add a little bit of a sharpness to the loaf, a little bit of a relief from all that um, healthiness, I guess, but the craisins are still pretty good for you. And then the other thing I want to add in there is um, a zest, well, maybe half a zest of an orange. Now, the reason uh, you can definitely zest this in your Thermomix, so you just cut off the slices of the skin, no white pith obviously, so just use a, a peeler, pop that in, and then you'll zest that literally, um, probably speed seven or eight, um, and that will break that down to zest. But I needed to, to mill down those first few ingredients, so I wanted a dry bowl to make that proper. So if you are using a traditional zesting tool, remember, you want to actually move the zesting tool and not your fruit. Any ideas why that is, Andrew? <laughs> no idea. Because if you do it the other way around, you will have lots and lots of zest left. And that's why a lot of your good zesting tools will have this little um, lip, so it captures all of that beautiful zest. How good does that smell? So if you look at my zesting, can you see how beautifully zested that part of the orange is? Little things make us happy in the kitchen. <laughs> is that such a word, zested? Well, 
everyone knows what I mean. So that will be fine. So hello to everyone. I've got uh, from New Zealand and Auckland, Nelson. Oh, and the Blue Mountains. I so love the Blue Mountains. We did Laura. Laura? Laura and the Blue Mountains, beautiful. So that's what we've got so far. That's going to be delicious. All right. Now we need to add in the water. And um, I'm not sure whether you've seen these. These are not in the mix shop. You'll find these in, in, in Woolly, uh, Grace Brothers and other kitchen shops. I just love this as a measuring cup because you can pop your ingredients in here and you've got the level markings inside. So what you don't have to do is keep picking it up and trying to kind of um, estimate where you're at. So we want four, sorry, 350 grams of nice warm water. Love the scales on the Thermomix. Measures beautifully for us. A little bit more. Remember we used to have some friends, just, it, well, you'd go through Katoomba in the Blue Mountains and you go down the hill and yeah. I can't remember the name, the name of the village. There was a small village down there and he owned uh, what used to be the garage there and he, uh, there was an airfield, he has a private little airfield behind his house and he, um, I'm sure his name was Roger. And he used to fly light aircraft. He had a helicopter at one stage. And uh, I used to fly for a hobby, and we used to land at his place. And he would uh, really show me how, the, how to fly the plane properly. We once flew over the Blue Mountain backwards in a light aircraft. So as long as you've got enough um, wind, wind or air over your wings, you can it stay in the air. In this case, the wind was that strong, it blew us back. And that was, a, that was interesting to go backwards in an airplane in the air. It was very. We've had some interesting times with you in the plane, Andrew. Do you remember in Scotland? Yeah, okay. Me telling you that uh, the yeah. ice on the wings. Yeah, enough of that. <laughs> I just noticed that took me when we panned over, Colette's doing a healthy dish, but she's drinking her Bellinis. That's okay. Bellinis are good. It's the weekend. Let's have fun. All right, so the water's gone in, and now all it wants me to do is to mix those together for 15 minutes. So if you don't know, Bellinis are, um, originally came out of a, a bar in, in Venice called Harry's Bar. It was invented there, there? by a barman. And uh, it's just basically uh, 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 peach juice and, and some, some form of sparkling wine. There's a great recipe on the Thermomix, of course. We all know how many beautiful cocktails and drinks the Thermomix has. So just to show you, um, it hasn't quite all mixed through, but that's fine. All I do here is just give it that little helping hand. So Colette likes a um, nice little flute, but I like to quaff mine in a large glass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so funny, Andrew. Okay, so I've just given that a helping hand. I just want to make mm, sure all that honey lovely. and everything is just mixed through beautifully. And do remember, especially for you new people, with your Thermomix, whenever you are using a spatula, you never want to stir backwards. You always want to go in a clockwise position. Why is that, Andrew? You mean backwards, you mean anti-clockwise. Yeah, anti oh, is that because it hits, hits the um, blade? Or? Yeah, exactly. Because it hits the blade. All right, okay. I get a gold star for getting one, right? <laughs> well, I'm making you a special dinner today, so. Oh, what are you making? And you're doing one of your favourite, one of my signature dishes. You haven't told me about this. What's that? <laughs> so one of your all-time favourites. It's a beautiful crab double bake. Oh, of course you. Yeah, of course you told me about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a seafood bisque. Yeah, I love so it. Love it. Love it. Double happy. double baked souffle. All right, so just popping that in and just pressing this into the tin and with my spatula. And um, it doesn't look very appetizing, does it? Let's be honest. Are you making the double baked souffle at your French Thermomix class? No. Oh, okay. Maybe you do that another one, the second one. All right, so, yep, so just in case um, you are free and you're not too far from the Brisbane office which is by the airport come and join me on the last Saturday of the month I've got a beautiful French cooking class um, and we're doing all sorts of things in the Thermomix I think there's seven different dishes that I'm cooking you're going to get to taste them all and you will pick up so many hints and tips and how do people book up on that um, there's a link on my Facebook page um, and it's amongst all the classes that you can book with Thermomix and it's, it's going to be a lovely one, a little bit gourmet. <laughs> so there you go, that is the loaf basically done. 
What needs to happen now, it needs to, you just need to cover it and just leave it on the side and let it sit for a couple of hours so that water can actually really suck up all those quinoa flakes and, and xylem husks, etc. Um, and just develop into this beautiful loaf. Once that's done, it cooks at a low heat in the oven at 160 degrees. It tells you all of that in the recipe, so you don't need to remember anything. And then after 40 minutes, you take it out and then you just invert it onto a baking tray and pop it back in the oven again at 160 for about another half an hour. And then you let it cool on a rack. So let's have a little look at one I did earlier. So talking about uh, Bellinis, I used to work for the company that owned the Orange Express Group. So they own the, they own the various simple on Orange Express and the Orange Express hotels. And we were fortunate that, that uh, at least twice a year we would take customers to Venice on uh, on a, uh, a bit of a, a freebie jaunt for us. And, and we stay in the Cipriani, which is just a fabulous hotel in Venice. And enjoy Venice and pop into Harry's Bar and join... Enjoy the, uh, but the Orange Express, if you've never been, it's uh, put it on your bucket list. It is just a fabulous, it's one of fabulous our favorite, yeah. favorite treats. Um, so here we go. So this is literally about um, just under half of the loaf. I tend to uh, bake it and freeze it. So you can see how beautiful that texture is. This one didn't have the cranberries in and didn't have the orange zest in, um, but it is so delicious. And what I love to do. And you can decide however you want to eat yours. You can just lather it with unhealthy butter. It's delicious. But I like to kind of cut it nice and thin. And it does cut beautifully. Just if you look at the slices, see all that, that goodness in there. Okay, let's just do it. One more. And then my favorite way of eating these, without doubt, is to pop these onto a lovely cheese board and then to indulge in um, a nice piece of your favorite cheese. This is a Castello Blue, which would be just amazing. Do I like that? Yeah, you do. So I'm just going to pop that on. You can put butter on and stuff if you want to, but honestly, it doesn't it doesn't need it. I think it's nice to let sometimes drizzle drizzles it with honey. Mm, definitely. So this is more of that hum honey, and um, all I'm going to do now is just to drizzle that just with a, ooh, a little yeah, bit, a bit exactly. too much there. Sorry. Oh, but we'll use it on the other ones. How lovely! I love that honey. It's so delicious. So, usually that comes out and you just drizzle it down, but Andrew, it's good. Have a taste. I will. Thank you. I'm going to have the bit with all the honey on. Oh, what a great combination. Mm-hmm. So good. That is actually better than biscuits. Mm-hmm. Made, guys, it's very delicious. Oh, that's so good. Um, what you can also do is pop the slices on the baking sheet back into the oven and then just dry them out so you've got a crispy kind of a cracker, and that's lovely as well. But super healthy, I love the texture of it. The nuts aren't hard, they're kind of soft, they are soft, mm. really, really nice. So how easy was that to make? Actually, I can imagine with the cranberries in, that's going to be mm. a little bit of sweetness. Yeah, a bit, bit more, bit more life to it. Which really oh, they want cranberries. What are they called? Uh, craisins. Craisins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's that beautiful loaf. Have a go. It freezes really well. Mm. Um, so as I said, I tend to, <laughs> I tend to freeze. I have to get rid of that mess. It's driving me body. I tend to freeze it um, in portions and then take it out. And then when it's gone, I then make another one because it's it's a nice staple to have, and you've always got something lovely to snack on with some cheese. That really, that was so good. Mm. And then you know, consider on your cheese board, of course, what goes lovely with this mm. as well is a little very thinly sliced apple, and that will be just delicious too. So, um, 
Our offer at the moment, which ends tomorrow evening, is if you want to upgrade to a TM6, if it's time for you to now, you know, bite the bullet and get the TM6, or if you want to get your very first TM6, and um, if you order it before tomorrow evening, you will um, get a free cutter. Now the cutter is a bestie, best friends with the Thermomix, it's designed by Volvuk. And just think making potato gratin in literally a couple of minutes and shoving it in the oven. Fuss free, easy and delicious. But you can grate, you can chop, and sorry, you can slice everything and it's really, really cool. But that offer does end literally tomorrow. So give me a call. I'm, I'm free the rest of the day. If you want to zoom in and have a look at the Thermomix and discuss any more, just let me know. Um, but that's it. That's me done for today. So have a go at this lovely loaf. This will turn into this, except it's got the cranberries and the orange zest yes, for a bit more life. Craisins. Um, craisins. And it's, it's just going to be delicious. Um, now I'm going to come back to you separately with something on yogurt, um, probably tomorrow. Yogurt. I will um, run through and show you the way that I make yogurt. I'm a bit of a rebel, um, but I'll show you how I do it. And it literally takes me a couple of minutes. So I will show you how I do that. Um, and look forward to catching up with you then. Enjoy the rest of your days. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Cheers, honey. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye, everyone. Say goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, Andrew. Oh, this is so good. Okay, you can say goodbye to everyone now. I'm just I don't normally like blue cheese, but this is this, this is it's Costello. Kind of creamy. This is just the Costello. I just don't like that metallic flavour. You get some some blue yeah. cheeses, but this is quite mild. It's like a cream cheese mm. with just a bit of a nice bit of softness. A bit of blue. Watch out when you pour in this one. I know. Better. Excellent. See you later, guys.